Those are all things that interest me. I couldn't bear the idea of being stuck in Whoa. the morning. So uh, this is how I'm going to do my show. And I'm very fortunate to share it with thousands of people. This year we've got 132 shows. We've got two more to do in the UK. Probably in America. We've been one in Portugal in November. So we'll be very, very busy. Now, this beautiful stallion I'm riding is called Lan Coronel, which basically means Colonel. Uh, he's now 14 years old and 15 in the spring, so he looks fabulous, but a bit like me, he's not in his 20s anymore. Um, but he's, I think, you know, there's an old expression, plenty of good tune played on an old fiddle. Well, this horse has got all the experience. Not only is he something to be useful to look at, but he has got the most wonderful temperament that you can see how willing he is to work, but also when he's over in our little uh, sort of rest area, he's just happy to stand there and let people stroke him and take his photograph and all that sort of stuff. So he's got a beautiful temperament as well as beauty on the outside. Now what we're going to do uh, is a bit like we did this morning, I'm going to take you for a bit of a trip down memory lane. For those of you who remember all the horsey programmes that used to be on TV when we were kids, well, I'm going to play a few for you just now. Here's the first one, it's very, very recognisable, called Galloping Home, and it's from Black Beauty. And when I heard this when I was a little boy, I never thought 40 years later I'd have a Black Beauty in my own. You want to have a little Galloping You can see just what she moves, just the way he moves is something that he's got. Good boy. Yeah. He's full of needs today. There's a, a, a bear over there, and he's obviously got his eye on it. But he's a stallion at the end of the day. Oh, oh, be careful, be careful. Okay, we're going to skip on now to this is from a TV show called White Horse. Tell us to this. I remember watching this, and the opening scene was a couple of kids riding through the woods of White Horses. Looking like they were having the time of their life. And you know what they actually were having the time of their life? Because I remember a similar time in my life with my sister riding off ponies and the thoughts of mortgages and overdrafts and responsibilities were a million miles away. Then I didn't realise that they were the good things really at the time, but they were. Okay, we're going to go on now to Saturday morning telly. Just after the stop, this is a program called Champion, Champion the Wonder Horse. Horse. Uh, we just have an old legend to swap the nails up to rubbish and more rubbish. And a black and white TV show with a kid called Ricky, she's got that one, would come on. And every week, the same thing would happen. Someone would pull down and I'd shout and hurt herself. Or oh, oh, something like that. Oh, I'm not a tree. 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 This is a theme tune for Horse of the Year show. Oh, yeah. Back in the 70s, the heroes that we used to watch were Harvey Smith. David Brew, Caroline Bradley, Michael Whittaker. And it was a fabulous time for the Horse of the Year show because it was on Main Street Tally. Just turn up with it for a second so we can hear it. Sounds a little bit like Ski Sunday. Do you remember Ski Sunday? Always used to be out before Highway. Who used to watch Highway? I was too busy recording the top. What's the happening? There you go, I want to remember that. I don't think it's okay, he's already said this, but do you remember pausing it before the, before, uh, whoever it was, David Travis, who said that the moment we were number four, they kept pausing, because we were used to recording it. The kids haven't got a clue, have they, these days? They don't know what recording it is. Okay, this is a modern theme from a, far, a very, very popular TV show. Have a listen to this. This is from Game of Thrones. The reason I'm playing this is because me and my beautiful stallion here are actually going to be in the Game of Thrones. We're going to film it over the winter. We're going to go to Ireland. Or we're going to go to Spain. Uh, I'm not allowed to tell you too much about it. I'll take my face and I'll have a bag in it. And I'll be galloping around on the horse with the sword, being fat. And I'll get paid for it. 
And the irony is, this horse is the kindest, most gentle, sweetest horse ever. He is a buddy. He just looks like a buddy because he's a black dummy. But he's not at all as soft as anything I need. He's stuck in the book because if you're a good stuck in the book. Well, Dutty, not then. Come on, stuck in the book. They always let you down, don't they? Okay, what I'm going to do is just do a little bit of high school in for you. Uh, we're going to play the theme tune from the Lloyd's Bank advert because this is the Lloyd's Bank horse from about four years ago. You'll remember this. And uh, it made us all cry at the time. It was around Christmas. And it's the 250th anniversary. This is my horse from the several others. So, just have a look, I'll show you a few bits of the This is called Passage, which is a very high elevated drop. I'm curated with my collection. I know I'm making. Oh, hang on, come on, man.
And I'm sure that lots of you who have animals, whether it be a dog, a cat, a bird, a prey, a horse, you know what they need to. Um, to me, your dog doesn't mean anything, but to you, it's your family, you love it. In the same way that I love this horse. And this year's been a difficult year. I've lost one or two family members who are very close to me. And I sat in my lorry over there, crying out there. My grandma died not long ago. Uh, I was sat there having a cup of tea, thinking, bloody hell, this is all not been terrible. And of course, I walked out the lorry, and who's there waiting for me with a friendly face? This beautiful horse. And I went over and put my arms around his big, strong, powerful neck, and he probably made me feel so much better. And that's when you know that you've got a real friend. He's here for me. No matter what my mood, whether I'm in a bad mood or a good mood, he's always here. And that means the world. I'm sure you can relate to that if you love your animals. Now, people often say to me, how have you taught your horse to do all these different things? And the, the answer is really through understanding. I've built up a bond with him. I know him. And he knows me. And that's something that doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. Like any relationship people, when you get to really know each other, you can forgive each other's bad habits, but you really love each other. Same in the same way I love this horse. But I try to focus on not what I taught him, but what he's taught me. And again, I said this this morning, and I'm not going to apologize for saying this again. I think it's important to say this. This horse doesn't have any concept of the future, and he doesn't think about the past. The only thing about right now is...
And Paul Wenner, the one that we flew this morning, he's also 21 weeks old. When you think about that, 21 weeks is nothing. Back in June, they were eggs. And now here we are in October, and they are a fully formed falcon. And not only a fully formed falcon, but the most incredible miracle of nature, the fastest creature on the planet, capable of speeds of over 200 miles an hour. So I feel very, very fortunate to have these three birds. And uh, what we're going to do is fly two of them. I'm going to fly the expert first. And then if it's okay with you, we're going to tag on a little bit of extra performance because Brent, who's a baby, he's been trained to the boat. There's absolutely no point being trained to do everything perfectly when I'm home and then suddenly expect him to do it at the show. So I realised that I've got to train him while he's at the show. So we get used to crowds and people, dogs and noise. You name it. So, as I said, we'll fly, Duchess, uh, and at the end, we'll give your brand a go. And you'll see, actually, how they progress. Now, how long does it take to train them? Well, they're all different. Well, when the bird that I flew this morning, believe it or not, it took three days. And people say it's rubbish, but it's well true. From the, the day she left her parents, that was a Friday, I drove to Lauder Castle. I spent all Saturday sitting down on the chair talking to members of the public. And she was terrified, but by the end of the day she settled a bit. On the Sunday I introduced her to the lure, which is the thing we swing round. And on the Monday I let her go free. And she was brilliant. So three days training, and that's all it took. And, which is incredible, isn't it? I've never trained a bird that quick before. Uh, her brother, no. Brad, who I'm about to fly for you, he's taken a bit longer. He's not quite as bright as she is. Uh, but the one we're going to start off with is called Duchess, is great. Her only fault, what do you call it, fault? Well, her only bad habit, if you like, is she has a game of shows like the whole world of crows. It's called her. She does kill quite a few crows. She had one last week, she had one like Cheshire Game Fair. Lots of people look at part of the show. Right, I think I won there if I may. Oh, baby, eat it. Uh, Everything is one handed when you're a falcon, because both the other one and the other one. I've got the allergy restriction on the horse and the Objects, yeah, there's a boy with that. Yeah. So, uh, so and they're making it easier to use. And as usual, what we're going to do is do this to music. Pick your stuff up, darling. Pick your stuff up. This is a music by a fellow called Thomas Ferguson. It's called Promise. It's a really nice piece of music. Very emotional. I heard this when I was coming back from the last show. No, it doesn't. Right.
my logic is you can always got a couple of spare socks. Because <laughs> you've got them on your feet. So I decided that very much to change the sock, even though it sounds a bit eccentric. It makes quite a good sense of the Okay, so sense if you want to sit on the end and you keep going until the end of the horse. So what I'm going to do is show you how I get the horse and the bird used to each other. So this is Brent, as I say, he's a male, the youngster. And the first thing you've got to do is get him used to the horse. The horse is obviously dozens of fog in the last seven years. So he's not in the least of the bird. So I'm going to get him used to the horse. And that really starts with the food. So I'm taking the hood off, and I'm just going to pass him a little piece of food while he's on the glove. Now obviously these two know each other, they're already used to each other. But just for the sake of explaining it to you, this is what I do. So I'll take the hood off, and let the bird have his tea while he's trying to get it on there. Of course. So you get this a bit where that works, alright? So he's all going to have to sit on the sand. So I'll just keep him on there. The horse is at least bit worried about that. The bird's not bothered about steam. So that all seems to work okay. So you can have a little reward for doing that as well. Now, again, this is all we done at home when I'm on the own in the middle of the field. And I've often thought, I wonder what people drive past the state. Now they stood there with a big black saddle and with a bird sat on the saddle. <laughs> No one ever set the car for us, though. Okay, the bird hopefully in a second is going to pull up his feathers, slowly push himself up, have a shake. If you keep your eyes on it, he's going to quickly pull up the horse as he just on that. He's going to have a shake. Let's see, what? One, two, three. There you go. This is going to start again. Okay. So that all seems to be working alright, and I'm afraid I need that seat, so yeah. I'm just going to stop on here. Go on, go on, yeah, that's it. Right, all I want Brent to do is to fly around and follow me to get with it. Off you go, Brent. Whistle the encouragement. <laughs> go on, off you go. Now you can see the way he flies, he looks like a great big butterfly at this age, he hasn't learned yet to do all the fast stuff that his older sister can do. But every time he flies away from me, I turn towards him. That's it. I just want him to follow me. Okay, I'm gonna let him have it this time. 